Good morning, saints of the Most High God. Are you excited to be here this morning? Are you excited to take time off from the world and to give yourself to one another, to comfort one another, to build one another up? Amen. See, we have purposely set aside a time that we could serve our Lord. This is our time. This is our time to set aside, to focus on the Lord. It, today is called the Lord's Day. We call it the Lord's Day purposely to give ourselves to the Lord. Some people give themselves all manner of things, but why are we here today? We have chosen purposely to give ourselves to the Lord. Or we do have trials in the world. Some people, they may bury their head in the ground for a little while, but eventually they're going to have some trials and troubles. We expect that. This is no strange thing to us. We expect trials to come. Eventually they will come as long as we're here. 1 Peter 4.12 talks about that. But we also look forward to this time. To say, flesh, you're, you're not welcome here. This is our time to spend ourselves for the Lord, to build one another up, to focus on what is important to us. See, some people, they focus on things that are, like, are temporal. They're going to pass away. Yeah. We take, we're taking our time right now to focus on things that are, not, that are going to be eternal. Yeah. See, this is where our comfort comes from. Our comfort doesn't come from the world. We find no comfort in the world. The more you spend yourself, you're going to, I mean, I know you, brethren, have, done, have already experienced this, but the more you spend yourself for the Lord, the more the world doesn't like you. And you will not find comfort with them. But this is our time to comfort one another. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18, I want to read that. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall raise first. Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So we come together today to comfort one another. To, to bring this up. That, hey... We have trouble and trials, and we expect that. We expect hard times to come our way, but it's not going to be for a long time. It's for a short period. Soon, as we have gathered together here today to enjoy one another's presence, to comfort one another, soon we are going to be all gathered together. All those who in before us experience trials, just like We'll be gathered together with Moses, who he forsook the things that he had in Egypt because he was looking forward to this time up ahead, just as we are looking forward to this time up ahead. Yes, we do have trouble, but soon it's going to be all over. So this is, this is our comfort. See, that's not comforting to the world. Those who are giving themselves to the world, the idea of Jesus coming back is not a comfort at all. It's not something they want to spend a long time talking about. Try to talk to them about it. They don't want to talk about it. But we do. So we spend this day to talk about it. To talk about how we're going to be gathered together with brothers and sisters who's gone through the same thing that we're going through. By our troubles, it just prepares us more to look forward to the coming of Christ. That's how we can look at trouble. We can say, whew, this makes me looking forward to Jesus coming back even more. Thank you, trouble. Now you can, you can get, you can get, you can, no, you can. You can worry about the trouble. You can be overwhelmed by the trouble. And sometimes it does get a hold of us. But then we can say, wait a second. I know my God is on, he's in control of all things. Is he sending this a little bit to me? Not giving me more than I can handle, but just enough bringing me to the edge where I say, come Lord Jesus, come. I've had enough of this world. Amen. Hello everlasting.
in life, we can say that. I welcome the day that I die or the Jesus, Lord Jesus comes back. How can that happen? It's because the Lord, he's, he's preparing you for that. Just as he did with the Hebrews, he prepared them to come up out of there, out of Egypt. We had to, we have to give up some things here, but that's okay. We're going to give them up anyway. Some things may be hard for you to give up, but you can think to yourself, got to give it up sooner or later. Yes, Let me give it up now. We'll definitely give it up today. We're willing to give up things of the world today to spend ourselves today for the Lord. Because we know we have an inheritance of an an everlasting inheritance, everlasting life. This is our joy. This is what we look forward to, Matthew 19, 29. This is great comfort to the saints. That we can stir one another up with this comfort today. We can stir one another up to think about these, to spend the whole day. They have nothing else to think about but the preparation of the Lord Jesus coming back. We can stir one another up today that we have everlasting life because we believe in the Son of Christ, John 3, 36. We can be comforted in knowing that we have a well of water in us springing up into everlasting life, John 4, 14. This is why we do not labor for the meat that perish, but for the meat which endureth into everlasting life. This is our refreshment. Those in the world, they find all kinds of ways for a temporary refreshment. This is our refreshment that's going to last for eternity. Deep within us, nothing can encourage a believer more than the thought of our time here being short. And that our Lord Jesus Christ coming back. That our troubles and our hardships and our trials are only for a little bit, just for a little while. And then we're going to be done with it forever. Unbelievers, they don't have this to talk about. They don't have the, the, they can't comfort one another with the thought of the time coming to an end. They can't comfort one another with the idea that soon we're going to die and we're going to be out of here. Amen. We're going to be with our God. There is no comfort for them. All they can do is look in the mirror every day and say, I'm getting old. And soon I'm going to be dead. Now, we can look in the mirror and say, I'm getting old, and soon I'm going to be dead and be with my God, a new glorified body. Amen. We can do this with joy in our hearts, see? What a difference this is. We can rise up far above our circumstances that trouble us here and now, but we'll end. We can... We can we can take all our energy now, instead of you know, throwing it into this world, we can throw all of our energy into preparing, making preparation for the Lord to come back. What does Satan have against us? But to draw our attention to the world that's passing away. That's where all of our care and worries are. We have no care and worry in going to glory to be with our God. All your trouble, all your care, all your hardship is because Satan has somehow drawn you down to the world. See, well, today we're rising up above, above that. Whatever our cares were yesterday, whatever our cares were, we're leaving that at the doorstep. We're coming here to build one another up. He really, Satan really has no power over us than what we give him. If you, want to, if you want to give him power to give you worry and trouble and overwhelm you, why? We, this is why we're told to set our affections on things above, not on things of the, uh, on the earth. Colossians 3, 2. This, on the, the things of the earth, they can do nothing but to pull you down. If our affections are rooted in things that have to do with the earth, we will be pulled down. We will be in danger. 
But if our affections are on things above, thinking about Jesus and being with God, what can the evil one really do to us? He has no effect. So, what do we do, brethren? We know that our life is but a vapor, James 4.14. So, we look at it that just like that. That our trouble is soon going to be over. That we can give ourselves to the things that matter. Things that endure. Things that are eternal. Let us do that today, brother. Let us, let us think about things that are eternal today. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I am thankful that this time is cut short. That our time here is not going to be long that we have to endure it is a comfort to us. We know that you are the comforter. You comfort all. And we pray, that Lord, that today, as we set this day aside, that you will bless us and strengthen, strengthen each one of us and comfort us with the thought that we are soon going to be with you. And that as we fight now, and it won't be for long, that we may be overcomers, victorious in Christ Jesus. I pray that you bless Brother Aaron, as he comes before us with a teaching, that we are encouraged by the words he has labored to receive, and that as he gives to us, we'll be eager to hear what he has to say with great anticipation and be alert and ready to receive. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.